Hi, it's Drew Tignanelli. This is our June 2024 update here with Michael P. McCarthy. Happy to be here as always. And what's on our agenda today, Mickey? Well, we always want to share what we've got exciting coming up in the month of June. Um, we have, uh, Drew, you're going to be doing the webinar this month on how to maximize charitable giving, right? Yes, that's not just financially, but that's also personally, too. So there's two components to it. And yeah, we're going to do that in June. Well, Maddie also has written an article on 10 things to do before you retire. So those two things should be coming out. So keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, we can go right into the market update. Yeah. So so the um, we often talk about what the Federal Reserve is doing because they have, um, you know, the, the buttons to press, the dials to, to turn to make various things happen. Really, they only have one dial. Um, yeah, they don't, they're um, not looking to move anytime quick. You know, uh, who knows what they'll end up doing. Yeah, so the next meeting will be June 11th and 12th. And across the board, expectations are that they'll hold rates the same, hold rates steady. Um, there is an interesting opinion that is being circulated uh, Jamie Diamond, uh, who's a famous investor, as well as Mohammed El Aran, uh, who's from PIMCO, if you haven't heard his name, they are both in agreement that um, following the strategic move that the Federal Reserve attempted or did make in 2021, and that that move was where they um, they saw inflation go up and they said, we think this is temporary, so we're not going to react to it. So that was a strategic move. We the The two of them believe that you know, and that move did not go well. Obviously, it was not short term. It was long term and in inflation kept going up. So they, we believe they've lost confidence in their ability to make strategic moves. And they're kind of going back to just going exactly by the numbers in the system and only reacting exactly to um, changes in those numbers. And a lot of those numbers, you know, aren't screaming for lower interest rate. Consumer confidence uh, rallied in May. Uh, three prior months, uh, it had been going down and it actually ticked up. Uh, core inflation ticked down slightly from 3.8 to 3.6 percent. And stock markets are remaining at near highs, uh, though we did see some volatility during the month. Yeah. You know, look, the statistics can, uh, you know, they, uh, <laughs> It's not the way to run it, run a shop. It's strictly on the statistics because statistics don't tell the full story. You know, as I keep trying to say, inflation is a two part phenomena, uh, demand and supply under supply over demand that's causes inflation. The Federal Reserve can only affect the demand side of the equation. They can't impact the supply side of the equation. They need Congress to help with that, and they're not getting any help from Congress. So I don't know. know how much they use it, but um, there's an interesting publication that a lot of our listeners probably don't know about. It's called the Beige Book. Are you familiar with the Beige Book, Drew? Oh, yeah. yeah. So each, uh, I guess, what do you call the different, you know, locations of the Federal Reserve? Each of the different districts, the, districts. The, central, the northwest the southwest the southeast the mid-atlantic so, yep those are the beige book areas so the uh the economists that work for the federal reserve in those offices they will go around seemingly randomly looking for indicators um things like you know the amount of bread being sold or the amount of any given product being sold or m m number of transactions of a certain type being done that's um, all telling different stories than just the pure statistics do. So yeah. well, anyway, that was, um, that's a good recap of the markets and we can uh, move on to planning. Drew, um, when we talk about financial planning and you, you know, our clients who have us as their financial advisors, um, when should you engage your financial advisor? When you, should you be reaching out to us? Anytime you have any kind of uh, impact to your total to your finances, uh, you know, you're applying for Social Security or Medicare, call us, you know, just get our opinion. You don't have to just let us give you some education on it before you make a move on either of them. When you're doing your company benefits every year, contact us. It, it's impacting. You're going to buy a big, uh, an expensive, a new car, a new house. Um, you're going to the lawyer to get your estate documents done. You're getting your tax returns done. You know, you're 
you're you're going to send your kids to college, you know, talk to us. Uh, get the education. You don't have to do what we're telling you. Just get the education before you make the decision because nothing's more frustrating, Mike, than when we find out from a client that they've made a move with an attorney and now we've got to say to them, but, you know, th this is something that we would have issue with. This is something we'd have issue with. Or the client's gone off and done something with Social Security or Medicare, and we say, you know, well, we wish you wouldn't have done that, and this is why, you know. And I, I just want to, we just want to talk to you. We don't, you don't have to do what we're telling you. you. Just listen to the education we give you, and then make your decision. That's what we're here for. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, especially with estate planning, we've had a couple occasions um, where folks make a new plan with an estate attorney but the estate attorney doesn't know that we've got beneficiaries on all the accounts. So all of the planning and documents they did won't, won't make a difference. Uh, there's tons of reasons why, you know, you need to talk to us. We're comprehensive advisors. You know, we, we cover the gamut of everything dealing with your finances. You're having issues with your parents and you have, uh, you have to help them and so forth. Talk to us. We're generational planners. We're dealing up the ladder and we're looking at down the ladder and we're looking at ways to help you maximize the efficiency of that generational planning and so forth. There's Absolutely. nothing that's dealing with your finances or your family's finances that should not be discussed with your advisor because that's what our clients pay us for, not just investment management. We're comprehensive advisors everything to deal with your personal finances we can educate you on and then you get to make the final decision and since this is the month of june that includes their vacations right vacations are a big expense for people you know so uh, and you can make some real blunders you know uh, you can lose some serious money when you make a blunder on a vacation you know absolutely you get a big one to disney world right I did. Uh, my wife and the girls and I, we just got back from Disney World, which uh, helped to inspire uh, this video's uh, planning topic. So I wanted to, to share some items um, that I think are good to keep in mind when you're planning your vacations and, uh, and, and in other things. So one of the things that has been talked about a lot lately, lately is if you're going to go on vacation and you're going to be away from your home, um, don't post about it until you get back. Uh, don't let people know, maybe people that you haven't known since high school, um, maybe people that you were friends with that aren't friends with anymore, but they still see you in their feed. Uh, wait to post about being away from home until after you're back home. So that's, that's one. Um, the other one is about transactions. And really, I would say this works almost all the time, but especially if you're traveling on vacation, if you've got a debit card and you've got a credit card, I definitely want you to pay the credit card off every month, but when you go to make that transaction, I want you to put your credit card in the ATM machine, your credit card in the gas pump, your credit card in the um, you know soda dispenser at the truck stop uh, or wherever else you do. And, and the reason is there's a device called a skimmer and it's placed over a credit card slot at like an ATM or a vending machine or anything else where you're putting your card in and out. And it, you, um, they use that to steal your credit card information, and then they'll start uh, putting charges on it. Now, if it's a credit card, well, you're responsible for watching your credit card and making sure you know what's happening. But you can call the credit card company and say, hey, that wasn't me. And they'll say, oh, OK, well, we'll, we'll take all those charges off. If it's a debit card, you're probably not getting that money back. That money's probably you're, gone. You might get it back, but you might. But you probably won't. It's your money, though. It's not the credit card company's money. You know, yeah. that's yeah, the whole absolutely. difference between a debit card and a credit card. So um, another item about um, planning and paying for vacations, you should never finance a vacation. It doesn't matter what Carnival says of what a great deal their interest rate is or the payments or whatever. Um, you know, I'm not saying don't put your uh, vacation on your credit card and get the points. But vacations are not things that we should accrue interest on. Um, another tip is to consider travel insurance. Now, just like with any insurance, it's not that you must have it. It's a decision that you have to go through. It's a process you need to evaluate. Um, that starts off with knowing whatever your vacation is, 
What is it that you can get a refund on? What is it that you can't get a refund on, but Southwest will let you book another flight another time so you don't lose the money? Um, you know, those are some of the things to consider. What is the total loss? And then find out from either the travel insurance company or potentially the vacation venue, um, find out what that costs. Um, the uh, Another aspect of it is if you're traveling internationally um, or if you're going to be in a situation such as a cruise ship. I know I saw this past weekend, a child was airlifted off of a cruise ship because uh, he had something wrong with him and they didn't think they'd be able to treat it on the ship. Oh, oh uh, punctured um, digestive system. Well, that's not something you want to be treated on on a cruise ship. No, no, you did. Yeah, the cruise ship surgeon isn't the same thing as the hospital surgeon. <laughs> I saw that love boat doctor. I'd never let that guy touch me, you know? You know that it sank last month? The love boat? The love boat sank in Florida. <laughs> um, thing I that's a story for another time. <laughs> that's another story. So, but, um, but so traveling globally, you might want to pay attention to if this travel insurance will help cover an evacuation, if it'll cover health care. You know, you have health insurance, but that might not do you any good if you're in a foreign country. Yeah, um, most of Medicare doesn't cover uh foreign travel and medigap will cover some but only if you have medigap plan g or d or n those are three that i know definitely do but the rest typically don't so and most medicare supplementals if you work for like um you know a big corporation or the state of maryland or something like that and you get a medicare supplemental from your old employer almost all of them do not cover international travel at all. So you got to be very cognizant of your medical uh, insurance requirements when traveling overseas, especially if going if going to Canada, I probably wouldn't be too concerned. If you're going to Europe, I'd probably be concerned because that's a long way and to get caught up in their medical system over there is probably not your best option. Right. So whenever you look at these types of insurances, it's important to really identify what are the risks that you're concerned with and then make sure you read the fine print to see if there's anything in there that um, would exclude you know, your purpose for buying it. Um, don't, yeah. don't trust the, uh, the reviews on VRBO or Airbnb necessarily. It yeah. can be great normally. It's one thing to look at, but don't take it as, oh, wow, this is highly rated, you know? You've learned that. Well. I've learned that I'm never going to book an Airbnb if my wife is traveling with me ever again because she's barely ever let us stay. We almost always end up, she makes me drive home because there's ants or there's something. <laughs> the one was pretty bad, but uh, but anyway, um, the uh, another thing to just consider before you travel, if you're traveling domestically, um, TSA pre-check, it's a little bit of a hassle to go through, but every time you go through the airport, you'll be thankful you did it. If you're traveling globally, there is um, another thing called global entry. It includes the TSC pre-check, but it also helps you to move through customs faster. Now, I uh, talked to our resident vacation expert, Graham Ewing, and he gave me a, a, another list of items that you can do for global travel and customs things. So if anybody has questions about that, we'll send you over to Graham. But he's kept telling me about it. And I said, you got too complicated for me to cover that in a video. Uh, yeah, TSA PreCheck. I uh, just recently renewed my to another ten years from the first ten years. It just expired at the beginning of this year, so I just renewed. It was relatively simple. Yeah, well, I renewed at the same time because you and I both got it together when you said we should do, get this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been doing it for ten years, and it's been very helpful. Though there are times when the the other boarding, there's no one in line and there's like yeah. everything's in the TSA pre-check. But you don't have to take your shoes off, Mike. That's what it's all about. I know. I know. I'm always worried when I take my belt off that something's going to go wrong. <laughs> um, so lastly, um, something that we see promoted a lot, and I took my trip to Disney and man, did they, they did an incredible job promoting their uh, timeshare program. But um, if you're ever considering a timeshare, you should talk to your advisor. Let us help you do the math and really understand it because they they present the timeshares in a way that make them look like a really good deal. You know, so far, I haven't seen one that mathematically worked out. I think for Disney, the only way it works is if you stay in the same place the same month 
every year for the next 48 years of your life, it might work out to be close to break even, as in my opinion, in my opinion. Because a lot of the things that people don't realize is that you give them a huge bunch of money up front, but then you've got to, um, you also have to uh, pay them every year a servicing fee. And at some point in your future, you may get to a place where, hey, I can't really afford to pay this servicing fee anymore. And they're like, doesn't matter, you owe it. Um, Look, Mike, there's a simple philosophy I've developed, okay? In the world of the internet, if something is great, put it on the internet and they'll come in the millions and buy it from you, okay? Mm -hmm. If it's not great, get the hardest core salesman you can find to sell it for you. And that's the only way timeshares are sold is through really, really hardcore salespeople. And there's a reason for that, why you don't just put timeshares on the internet and people come flocking to them because they can't, nobody logically looks at them and says, this is a great deal. I'm going to buy this. And, and millions of people come on the internet and just buy them because they're a great deal. They have to be hardcore sold. That's why annuities, annuities typically, there are very few annuities that are just bought on the internet most of them are sold through hardcore salespeople that get paid handsomely, Mike, handsomely to sell timeshares and to sell uh, annuities. And yeah. we've had the lady on our uh, radio show. She used to be a timeshare manager and she felt so bad about what she had done after like two or three years she had to leave and she's now gone on a crusade to help people not buy timeshares. <laughs> yeah, well, this is good philosophy for everything in life that we're buying. Because I was thinking as you were saying this, this also applies to financial advisors. There yeah. is no such thing as a free steak dinner at- uh, No, dinner. no. And, you know, if, if, you know, we put our stuff out there on the internet and people who see it as really good, they come out and they come and talk to us, you know? We go on and we we educate people. If people like what they hear, they come talk to us. We're not we're not trying to sell anybody. We don't need to sell anybody. Nobody gets commissions around our office for um, you know going on and selling things to people. We don't need to. Um, but the majority of the industry does focus on trips and incentives and commissions, et cetera, et cetera. It's unfortunate that the industry hasn't changed as much as it could have by now. But slowly but surely, Mike, the uh, pendulum is finally starting to swing toward our direction. Yep. Unfortunately, it's only like 5 to 7% <laughs> toward our direction. But it's gone from 1% to 2% the last, you know, like 10 years ago to maybe 5 to 7% today. So that's a movement. That's a good yeah. movement. Absolutely. Anything else that you wanted to address today? I think we've used all of our allotment of time. All right, all of our allotment time is over. This is Drew Tignanelli saying God bless.